Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. This little device promises to enhance your Xbox Series controller in many ways. Add wireless play, a rechargeable battery, offer programmable back paddles and hair triggers, a la the Xbox Elite controller, and finally add gyro-assisted aiming to any game, including on game consoles. All of this controlled by a real-time accessible app on your phone. That's a lot to promise, but does it deliver? Let's find out together, stick around. Okay, well, we've got a lot to do, so let's get started. First off, don't you love the box? You know, I've been getting crap from Amazon and AliExpress, and basically they take something and they wrap it in a doily and shove it in a box. I just like it when there's like consumer level products here. It looks beautiful. I haven't even cracked the seal on this yet, so let's do it together, shall we? So this is it. Um, we have the unit itself, the Armor X Pro. Along with it, we have a dongle, and it looks like there's a cable and a manual stuffed in the back. Let's get rid of that. And let's see what we got going on in here. So pretty standard manual. There's a lot of buttons, switches, and knobs on this guy, right? So it's obviously going to take a little bit of effort to get used to using this thing, but uh, there's not much in this manual either. I bet we're going to have to go online to get a lot of data. Uh, here we have a standard USB-C for charging, and we have the dongle. So... What does this dongle actually do? Though, is there a plug on the end of it? <laughs> We're gonna have to figure out all this stuff. There's a button here, I assume that's to pair, but gosh, you never know, right? But it looks nice. I like the design of this thing. I like the cap. I don't know, I, I like it when companies put a little effort into this stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at the device itself. There's like tons of buttons on here. There's a plug to plug at the top of your controller. Um, here's your battery on the back. It looks like it just sort of clips in. The buttons feel great. They're nice and tactile, responsive. I can feel those rear paddles are gonna be kind of weird though. So let's take a look at the Xbox Win 10 controller. See if it fits in here. Let's take a look. Okay, okay, okay. How about the Xbox Elite controller? How about that? Will that work out okay? Damn it, an Xbox One controller. Ah. Okay, so five days later, I managed to put my hands on an actual Xbox Series controller, which is the only one that actually works with this device. And listen, uh, it's a very it's very nice controller. I got it for like $51 direct from Microsoft, two-day shipping, not too shabby. And let's see if the device actually behaves now that I actually have the controller that it was designed to work. It snaps right in, beautiful, plugs right in. Ah. So here we have mapping buttons, we have the rear paddles, uh, function buttons, we have power, all sorts of good stuff. We're gonna have to dig in here. And it and it feels actually really good. I don't know about these other two buttons right here, but the ones on the bottom feel good. And overall, it doesn't add any real weight to the controller. Man, it, it feels really good. It's light. I don't know, this, if it actually works, this might be the greatest product of all time. On the bottom here, we have a USB-C port to charge. And so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in now. And uh, yeah, there you go. See, it plugs right in. It's a little, little shallow though. I don't know if it's really it's really in there all that well. It just, uh, let me see here. Well, it looks okay. I'll, you know, light's on. So I guess we're okay. Okay, so let's take a better look at the dongle. We have a light, we have a button on the side, and that's it. I do dig the little cover. It just lets it stand right up there. That's kind of nice. I dig it. It's, it's attractive. What can I tell you? What's this USB port for? Was that for like pass-through? Can you plug a flash drive in or something? Is it for firmware updates? Who the hell knows? We're gonna find out though. We're not gonna leave you hanging. How was our chart? Oop, plug fell out. Well, that's, um, it's not a good start. It, does, it doesn't go in very deep. Hmm, I don't know. That I, I would definitely call that a minus. I don't wanna have to guess whether my thing's charging or not. You know what I'm saying? Now that we've got everything put together here, it's time to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start off by upgrading this guy. If you go to the website, Big Big One, I know, right? Can you believe it? I, I can't even, don't even know where to start with this. But you go there and you click a download, the firmware and the actual tool that you need to flash the firmware are both in the same file. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and extract this guy. Should be pretty straightforward, RAR file. And there are the two firmware files. 
And where is the executable? There it is. All right, great. So let's go ahead and run that. And fail. My virus scanner says it's a virus. Well, it's AI found, probably heuristic. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna allow it, but listen, you might wanna scan your system afterwards. Okay, so now we can run it. <laughs> and it says drag the upgrade file and insert the upgrade device. We're gonna start by upgrading the dongle. You hold down the button on the dongle and plug it in and then release. And that's what puts it into update mode. I just saved you like three pages of English. There it is. Now, all we have to do is drop the dongle USB file in here and hit upgrade. Yeah, it's working. We're one step closer. All right, great. Looks good. All right, now for the controller itself. Okay, so what you do is plug in a cable, right? Hold down the center hex button, plug it in. And then when the light shuts off, you can let it go. And boom, there it is. Again, I saved you a ton of interpretive reading right there. We're gonna grab that BUP file and put it on there. We're gonna upgrade it. And they tell you when you're done with this thing that you're gonna to wanna to repair it because it won't pair again after you do this upgrade. So let's go ahead and do that. So this works very similar. This time, plug it in without holding the button down, plug in the dongle. So we're gonna hold the button down until it pairs or it starts pairing. There we go. And then we are going to power up the controller. And then we're gonna hold these two buttons, the A, B and the function button until it starts blinking and boom, we are now connected. All right, so we're gonna run the app via link to Windows. So this is an Android phone. Uh, I installed the app on and now it's gonna need some permissions. And there we go, there's the app itself running. It's just easy to record on Windows, folks. We need to make sure we're running the right version. Now I installed the app a lot earlier, like Monday. And so um, we need to make sure it's the right version. Sorry for the uh, HDR capture here, my bad. We're gonna go to more and then hit information. It's gonna take a moment, but then it's gonna tell us what version everything is. There we go, and the app is 2.22, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just to make sure that we had the actual most recent app, and we do. So we're not gonna do anything else with that. All right, so before we get into game footage, let's take a look at the phone app itself. You have multiple configurations, all flippable on the fly. Motion control sensitivity, you've got sensor curves, response curves, dead zone compensation, whether you're doing left stick, right stick, even if you wanna change the type of horizontal Z and Y axis that you'd like to move on, even invert the axis for those who believe that looking up should be back and looking down should be forward. You have full stick control, including performance curves, axis reversals, all the sorts of things you would wanna see. Dead zones for your triggers, you also have these hair triggers that didn't really work out very well. It turns out that the trigger is sometimes stuck when you use those. And of course, you can completely alter what all of the buttons do. So if you want a, a Nintendo Switch configuration or an emulation configuration, you could do so, turbo mode, the whole bit. Um, it's, it's really quite impressive. All right, now it's time to go ahead and fire up the game that I'm constantly playing on the PC and on the Steam Deck, which is Overwatch. You do have to remember that the no, controls are very sensitive. Just take a look there, see? See the way that I'm moving? It, it doesn't require a lot of motion to get the sort of tracking that you're looking for. As with the other video I did using gyro controls on the Steam Deck, you still use the right stick for large movements. And then after you get close to your target, you then use the motion controls to dial in your target or to track your target. So it's not like you're giving up the right stick altogether. It's still there and you're still using it quite a bit, but you're using it, you're using the gyro for very fine precision aiming. Now it's very difficult to see fine precision aiming inside of Overwatch, mainly because uh, well, you know, it's not a reticle-based sort of game. It's not a shooting game, per se. You can see a lot of the characters I'm getting in this mystery heroes don't really shoot anything, or if they do, it's non-precision. 
But you do have a couple of characters in here that do require pinpoint accuracy. And you can see I can dial in pretty well here. Almost got him with that knife. I would have never gotten that close. And half the shots you see in here, I probably wouldn't have made without being able to dial in a little bit with that motion control. And again, it depends on the character, right? A lot of characters in Overwatch are designed not to be precision shooters, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. It gives me character options. But when you're playing Mystery Heroes and you get that weird character that requires it, it's nice to have the gyro. Let's move on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This is definitely a reticle-based shooter, and this you're going to be able to see a lot clearer how this gyro works and just how much more efficient it makes me. Now, I'm a pretty good dual stick shooter fan. I never really made the transition back to mouse and keyboard once I spent a lot of time on Xbox. So I've always been a twin stick shooter. And so, but I definitely get, I get more consistent hits. I get more headshots and that's worth more, you know, that's worth more. And I get consistently more score streaks, right? Because I don't die in between kills. So you can see it, the tracking, being able to track your enemy is really where this comes into play. Because with the stick, you tend to overcompensate. You're not fast enough with it. You um, you under move, you over move, and it just doesn't work out. I mean, you can see I'm on fire right here. I finally got my clock clean, but. For the most part though, I mean, there's definitely a difference. And again, when you're going for those headshots or you got somebody who's carrying a shield in front of them, you gotta hit their feet. All of these things are definitely improved by using the gyro, at least they are for me. You can see it worked out pretty well. Of course this works on the Steam Deck. That was one of the major reasons you probably tuned in here is I know what you're thinking. I'm I'm a gyro user on the Steam Deck. When I go external and plug into my TV, I still want to use gyro. What are my options? Well, this actually does work. Dialing in, shooting the cameras in Far Cry 6. Getting those crazy headshots. Tracking them. You see, I tracked him, but he stopped, right? So I missed him the first time. But there's all sorts of of great uses. Again, taking those cameras out, taking the alarms out, things like Assassin's Creed, same idea. And again, you know, these perfect headshots are very, very satisfying. I love it. It works great. So here is a closer look at the hardware with everything up and running. You can do everything on the device that you can pretty much do with the app. You're gonna wanna know how to do this, right? So you can reprogram by holding down A and B, hitting a button you wanna reprogram, letting go, and then tapping the button you want to remap to. In this case, I want to move it to the left click. Perfect. You can also do profile settings here. You can hold three on the device itself. The profile settings are a real pain in the butt to do on device. I wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with using the app. And then you can toggle the gyro on and off in case you uh, need it for one piece of the game, but you don't need it for the other parts of the game. You'd prefer not to have it. Maybe it interferes with your precision. Who knows? It's great you can do all the stuff here that you wouldn't need the app for if you need to do something quick and on the fly. Wow, Armor X Pro actually delivers everything it promised and then some. Not only does it augment the excellent Xbox Series controller with much needed accessories like a rechargeable battery, wireless connectivity without the official adapter, but it's promised to offer full programmability with a phone app, as in no PC required, delivered. Anything negative I have to say about this device, it's surface level. The hair triggers may be fixable with a dead zone adjustment, but that doesn't make up for the lack of trigger locks provided by the Elite, which is a much better implementation. The USB-C port shallowness is unfortunate, but it's not a deal breaker. The second set of rear buttons aren't nearly as well laid out and essentially make you use the same finger to hit them. An adjustment period, but certainly it isn't broken. Of course, the elephant in the room is that it only works on the latest Xbox Series controller, not an existing Elite Xbox One or other Xbox accessory controller. In the end, you'll likely pay more for an Xbox Series controller, plus 
the Armor X Pro, but you will gain several features for that extra scratch, including the seriously life-changing potential with gyro controls and the remarkably robust and easy to use phone app that will remove any need from hitting the Xbox Accessories app on your PC to program. All in all, I'd say the Armor X Pro delivers on its promises, and if you can get through the sometimes rather challenging English on their website and are comfortable installing unofficial apps on your phone, at least on the Android side, this enhancement tool will enrich your gaming lifestyle in many ways. What do you think? Do you have one of these? How do you like it? Will this video prompt you to get one or at least try it? Let us know in the comments below. While you're there, you know, like the video, subscribe if you please, and of course, ring that notification bell. It is appreciated. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks for watching and take care.